Greetings, mortals. Warcry has landed, and we've seen a ton of activity on Twitter, on Facebook, etc. And if you're like me, you've got a ton of new terrain to build. Now, before Warcry came out, I spent a lot of time building up and painting my uh, Azerite Ruin terrain. And um, it was a lot of fun, and I went for a little bit more of a sandstone and sunset kind of feel to it. And as I've posted these in places, people have asked, well, how did you do that? What did you use? What colors did you use? So I'm going to do a step-by-step, -step, what colors I used, the rattle cans, et cetera, and uh, give you some, you know, it's kind of some step-by-step. -step. And you can do this yourself. A lot of people have used these techniques and with different colors and had great success. So I'll do my best to just give you some, some tools so that you can either paint them just like I did or uh, find your own colors and do it your own way. So let's go to the hobby table. This is uh, one of the ruined pieces from the Azerite Township. And um, as I mentioned, I was building these up prior to Warcry being released so that I'd have them ready uh, for uh, playing some games of Warcry. And uh, one of the things uh, that I did was to, to kind of get something that I liked but do it kind of quickly. Um, I think I'd seen this uh, from one of the Games Workshop um, uh, employees was was doing it but and we've seen kind of a increase in this and what would be called kind of a zenithal spring where you spray um, a dark color from you know around and then a light color from on top as you can see i have kind of this two-tone going and it's it's a way of blending as well i would go from kind of an orange up to a yellow and into a creamy ivory white um, and what's cool about this is that when you view it from kind of this angle you get um, you get more of the yellowish tone and when you view it from this angle you get more of the orangish tone and it's kind of cool when you're on the table you're generally looking at it from this kind of uh, angle um, what's cool is that when you are um, on the table and looking at it, you're generally seeing it from this angle but when you get down to kind of eye level uh, with your miniatures you start seeing kind of more of this tone um, so it's really great for photographs and stuff having a little bit of variation um, in that so I'm going to show you with as I start working on my war cry terrain the first piece that I kind of clipped out because it was all in one sprue and easy to kind of assemble together is my um, bell tower now what I like about this tower are there's a lot of things there's woods there's the stones uh, there's the skeletons, there's the metal, um, and there's all, so there's a lot of opportunities. I left this one blank so I could hide something in it, kind of a treasure or something like that, so make that kind of an objective at some point. I liked making this guy upside down. I thought about having one kind of fallen off and hanging. Uh, this does come with the ones that are hanging off here, uh, but I was like, that's just too many uh, skeletons used up on one piece, and so I'm hoping to use those uh, kind of those guys in the stocks or whatever they're called um iron maidens uh on some other pieces but i'm going to use this piece to show you kind of a number of my kind of materials that i've painted now these are lumbered uh wood which is a little bit different than uh the um you know uh sprue the hacked timber that i uh, have created in some other things you can see kind of how they can go together in the walkway etc um, so, but I'll, I'll see if I can paint this the same way as this, um, as you might've noticed in one of my other pieces, um, the, the variation or differentiation between this and this isn't great. It's pretty subtle, um, but, um, it may work for this as well. So we'll see if we can, we can do that. And when we get there, we'll, we'll try that out. So, um, yeah, so we're going to start painting, uh, this piece to look like, um, my the Azerite ruins that I have and uh, we're going to get started so the first coat I've put down uh, and not all the way up but for most of the kind of lower two thirds is um, uh, a bright or kind of a actually a little bit of a dull of a rust or an orange um, the, the color that I used the paint that I used um, I, what I'd like to do is use fairly common to find stuff I don't know if uh, Games Workshop or any of the other modeling companies has a paint of this color, um, but uh, the Rust-Oleum uh, line is, is sold a lot of places in the U.S. This one is actually called Paprika. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is a bit of a satin finish, which is fine. Stone can have that kind of finish to it uh, when it's been kind of polished and smoothed by age and time. 
And uh, this works really well. It sets very well on here, etc. Now this is still drying. I'm not necessarily going to wait until it's fully dry before I get my next color on it. Um, but um, to give you an idea of some other ways to get this color, you can um, use um, Evil Sun Scarlet and Troll Slayer Orange and mix those together for a little bit darker of an orange moving into the red spectrum. Um, and uh, those two mixed together will give you a lot. Now, um, one of the things I use that for is because I can't always get in the recesses with the spray can. Uh, even if I you know, go straight on, it just doesn't always get in there. And I don't want to spray so long in there that I start caking all the um, the the details. So I might take that and go back in there and fill those spots in. Or I might do that with a, a dark color. Um, the wash I use isn't that dark, so... Um, that could work in there, but, uh, you know, I just might touch that up, etc. Now, as I mentioned, this wood, I don't treat that the same way. So uh, it got sprayed. I'll be able to paint over it, etc. Same with the bell. Those will get treated separately as I uh, kind of move along. So next, uh, the, the goal here then is, uh, and you can do this with other colors, is just to have enough contrast between your your base kind of straight on spray and now I'm going to spray with a lighter color, light enough to add contrast to this from an angle. Now, I wish I had waited to put this on for a couple reasons. One, so I could paint it more like the wood, which I still will, but it wouldn't get this spray. But also because I'm not going to be able to catch much paint here, um, which I guess thinking about a little more as I'm talking about it is okay because you would, the point is that it kind of feels a little bit brighter from the top, kind of the sun, it's lit. And so that's going to cause that spray to hit here, but create a little bit of darkness under here. And I'm okay with that. Same with um, underneath here. I've painted under here. I'm unlikely to try and get any of my light spray here. It's just going to remain that orange underneath. And so it'll stay kind of orange in the dark recesses. It's kind of like, what if, just weird how the light's hitting it, etc. cetera. So um, it, it just creates a visual interest, etc. cetera. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to kind of do an overspray with a, I use a, a bone color, so Xandri Dust uh, spray or um, a, a skeleton bone from uh, Army Painter, um, and I'm sure there's a n number of other of these kind of just even an ivory color would do the trick. Now this, that, that bone color, the ivory color is what I use for kind of my desert sand bases and so, um, and, and stuff, and that's where I've got it on this, this terrain. Here again, you can kind of see a comparison of uh, where I'm starting and where I'm going to end up with where that, that lighter color uh, goes. So on to the next step. So I've done my overspray um, with a uh, bone color or a desert color, uh, yellow, etc. And you can see already how uh, from this angle, everything looks like it's got more of that coverage. And from this angle, you can still see a lot of that orange uh, undercoat. And it just kind of creates this shadow. It's like where the shadows hit. Um, and if you use a significant enough contrast again, you can see um, how that just creates visual interest. And as I go up, it's more orange down here. And as I go up, there's less of that orange up here. Um, so varying degrees, and as I mentioned too, you get a lot of that good shadow underneath here. So um, um, I really like how that turned out. I like where that's going. My next step then is to, as you would with a lot of miniatures, as you do with a lot of terrain, is you do a wash and then you do a dry brush. Now, and you can see again kind of where they're at in these different stages. We're most of the way there because we'll end up with a dry brush of a similar of like a uh, bone color or um, we use the, uh, I'll show you the colors that I'm using in just a moment, but uh, so we'll we'll get up back up to that brightness, but we want to get that mid tone, that kind of yellowish, um, kind of mustardy color in the in between, and uh, the uh, the thing I use for that um, is a wash called uh, Flesh Tone from Secret Weapon Miniatures. Um, interestingly enough, if you create your own washes you can use uh, the Games Workshop color XV-88 as um, as the base for a wash that's almost it's super similar. So it's kind of like an orangish or a yellow, orange, camel, brown color. Um, and it creates a fantastic kind of mid-tone wash for this. Um, and um, uh, give me one second and I will show that to you. All right, 
So the secret weapon uh, flesh wash is what I'm going to be using to wash this. I'm not going to have you guys watch me wash it. Um, I cover it head to toe using a brush and this. Now, as you can imagine, if I use this on all my terrain, I'm going to go through quite a few of these. And it does a decent job. But then if I want to take and do it uh, kind of on, on a bigger scale, using the XV88 is pretty close. I don't think it's quite as dark as this, but it's pretty close. And I've used it on some kind of larger terrain pieces and boards where I mix this with, uh, you could do with Lamy and Medium to create that wash uh, and some water. Or you can use um, this um, Liquitex um, Matte Medium. And that is something you can mix with this. It's very similar to, to Lamy and Medium. Um, it just doesn't have the name. Um, and with some water and you make your own wash and you can cover this with that. So a couple of, of good options. And again, this is what I use for all of my desert bases on my Ogre Tyranid um, uh, army and on uh, my, my um, the stuff I used. Uh, the stuff I did for my uh the bases for for these so it just kind of gives you uh this is a little bit more rocky um, but i do a little bit more of a sandy for my uh ogres so um anyway so this will be my next step i'll be back in just a minute when that is all done i took a just a minute um to uh wash kind of part of this and uh give you a sense of what it looks like uh, kind of mid wash once it's kind of uh, coming from this very dry tone here into this warm, rich, um, kind of yellowish tone. So um, just to give you an idea of what that flesh wash or what the XV88 um, wash is going to do to uh, do to this kind of two-tone. And now you still see, uh, it'll once it dries, you'll get a little bit more of a difference, but you'll see that the, the orange kind of softens a little bit and the um, the bone color darkens a little bit, and so it just kind of creates a nice mid shift. Now, no matter what two tones you're using for contrast, um, finding a wash that's going to kind of blend the two or a glaze that blends the two um, is important. Um, now, it, you, I'm sure there's lots of different uh, mixes that are going to work for you and have worked for other people. This is just the one that I use uh, for this, and, and this is a recipe. It's nice having a, a recipe. Um, that you create early on that you can, can just kind of duplicate and work on. And if you see how advantageous that is, um, check out uh, Chuck Moore um, on Twitter and see what he's been doing, uh, building a ton of terrain for Nova and being able to kind of have that using two rattle cans to spray some different tones. He uses an orange and a black. And uh, one of the things that... his work actually inspired me on was then to take this extra step and do some a, a black spray uh, kind of at an angle to catch some edges to make this look like it's been burnt out or blown out by magic or cannon or something like that. So uh, so fire and, and that sort of stuff can, can uh, abuse stone as well. I know stone's not going to catch on fire, but if there's some sort of accelerant or you know, magic that was on there and kind of um, burnt that first layer of stuff, it's going to remain on there. So um, anyway... Uh, just some things like that. So you, having the recipe that you want and being able to use that over and over. I'm going to finish uh, the wash on this. And the next time, uh, in just a moment, we're going to go over dry brushing. All right. I've got the stone pieces um, washed and it's dried. And a little tip I recommend is if you want to speed this up so you can make a video in one night instead of over a couple of days, um, is to use a, a hair dryer, an old hair dryer or something to kind of help the paint dry, help the wash dry, etc. Um, and especially on a piece like this that, uh, you know, again, if the wash is moving around or whatever, it's not a big deal, but you can see how much, uh, it's kind of taken this and yellowed it and kind of created that variation. Uh, wash staining is not an issue with terrain. And then we still have that kind of nice yellow or orange tones, um, underneath. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dry brush. And um, I like using uh, the dry, the, the Citadel dry paints for this because you can just use a little bit from here and work it into the bristles. Um, and I'll show you that real quick. Um, but you could use any kind of like ivory or other um, bone color, etc. cetera, um, to do this. Uh, you can use any wet paint to do a dry brush. Um, you just have to make sure, again, that your, your brush is getting to the consistency you want uh, to do that. 
and this will be the only thing, only time I'll I'll demonstrate because this is not a big deal. But I'll I'll take, and you want to get a lot of that paint out. And it's not as big a deal to kind of go heavy or light on terrain. If you were working this on a miniature, you would probably go a little bit, quite a bit less paint than that. Um, but I compensate then, and I'm just trying to kind of get a sense of how much I want to do, and I, I'll just drag it lightly. Uh, but I always start at the top uh, because I want the most um, dry brushed paint to be at the top. I want the most lightness to be at the top. So I'm okay if more paint's coming off the brush up here than down here. And so I'll bring it down. You can see I've kind of flipped the side of my brush and I'm going to get some more out of that. And already you can kind of see the difference between the two sides and it's really just bringing out the, the highlights, the details, and it allows you to kind of, again, get a lot of contrast between the undertones. Um, and let me, I'll, I'll do a quick kind of here too. I've got my, my orange undertones. I've got my uh, kind of flush or XV88 mid tones. I've got my um, yellow high tones. And now when I come in with this, um, I'm picking out those details. And it's just creating uh, a lot of visual interest for this piece of terrain. And this is only the fourth step on this. So it becomes very easy. After this, um, I'll work through all these. I'll work on other details, etc. But you can see where this is going. You can see um, how much we're working on. Um, uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. If you're interested in this kind of tone, this kind of look and feel, um, that uh, an orange uh, undercoat or any kind of darker undercoat with a light overspray from above to kind of create some light and shadow, a wash that's going to kind of blend the two a little bit, go kind of a mid-tone between them, and then a dry brush of something more closer to the, that original high tone um, is a great way of kind of adding a lot of depth to the train, giving you kind of um, a lot of kind of visual interest from looking at it from the top down, uh, at eye level and then even if you can get down low so um, this is my I guess I should give it a known name kind of like a sandstone uh, plateau kind of thing uh, you know you think of like the deserts of Nevada and the rock formations etc that this really kind of fits that look and feel so um, I want to thank you for watching I hope this helps and uh, look forward to showing you some more um, of my war cry builds and uh, paints etc in the future